Hello and welcome to Stuff Mum Never Told You. My name is Adam and this is the programme where we help you at home with whatever is bothering you or stuff you really want to know that your mum probably never told you. We'll talk about the good, bad, ugly and even the embarrassing to help you feel a bit more at ease. We'll help you out the best we can and also share our own stories and experiences. With that being said, let's get on with it. Every week, we'll post on our social media platforms a few topics that we will discuss in the episode. It's then your chance at home to ask whatever questions you like. So it could be advice, your own story, or asking us about stuff that we've experienced. This week, we'll be covering alcohol, partying, uni, relationships, coming out, and the stigma around mental health. The first topic in today's show is alcohol and going out. The question comes from Jessica on Twitter. I'm going on my first night out soon to a club. I like going out, but I don't like drinking and I feel pressure to keep up with everyone. What advice would you give to first time club goers and what was your experience like? And is a hangover really as bad as they say it is? Jordan, any good drunk stories? Yeah, well, um, I'm 22 and I only got sick drunk for the first time in my life last weekend. <laughs> yeah, so I just drank like, like eight shots worth of gin with mixer over the course of a couple of hours. And I just got ill really, really quickly. Gin as a shot is different. Really, really I've badly. Yeah. Gin as a shot. I didn't take it as a shot, no, I, as a mixer, but like eight shots <laughs> worth. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> mixer, right, you know right. what I mean? It's a weird way to measure it. <laughs> yeah. Well, how else are you going to measure drinks? Eight gins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll just not tell my story then. <laughs> so how did you get drunk? <laughs> I got drunk with eight shots of gin. <laughs> <laughs> if there was one thing about this story that I thought would be clear by now, it would be that. <laughs> So I got mega ill really, really quickly and I just spewed my guts out. I didn't make it out of the flat. So my roommates went, I was like, go on without me, have a good time. I just spewed in the toilet, spew in the toilet. And uh, then I brushed my teeth, got my jammies on, went to bed with a bottle of water and uh, a basin. So, you know, so stuff you like that's gonna happen, but <laughs> just take care of yourself and... Would you recommend a bottle of water before bed then? I would recommend a bottle of water in between every two or three shots of gin to prevent that from happening in the first place. Uh, that is smart, actually. But That's really the, good advice, If you actually. get to the point of no return, aye, bottle in a basin to bed with you. Bottle in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a bit dangerous when you're trying to keep up. I remember going on a night out in uh, Dundee. <laughs> went to the chippy after. And I was, uh, my mate's like sitting in the taxi across this like fence. That's all I remember it as. And I got stuck on the top with one leg over and I was like swinging forward <laughs> on this fence because I was just absolutely wrecked. So that was embarrassing. I think my pants were out for everyone to see. <laughs> um, so when you try and keep up, bad things happen. I think that's just Dundee, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or just me. <laughs> Any fun me. stories? Um, I would say like one of the first times I got drunk was uh, like at a house party and it was... Uh, this is why I would say avoid vodka all sh uh, like all costs, because I had a bottle of vodka, no like mixer at all. And when you're at that age, you don't know that like if you're just drinking that much all the time. Basically, passed out in the toilet. Like my mum was called, dragged to the car, <laughs> then I ran out of the car back into the party. <laughs> <laughs> just like that, repeat, on repeat, on repeat. Um, and then I woke up like sick everywhere. Parents raging, grounded for ages and ages and ages. So I've got better at it since then. <laughs> I think we're really starting to scale Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Such a shame. Like the last time I was drunk, because I don't drink anymore, was I went to this 80s themed bar and I can't remember half the night, but I came out. I remember I had chips and cheese. I sat outside the central station and my friends were across the road and I was just sitting on the floor, like, all right. <laughs> and, all this. and I remember the taxi driver was like, you can't bring up my taxi. And I was like, well then, I just poured them in my bag. And I remember <laughs> the next morning, I can't remember getting home or anything, but the next morning I remember going, what the, f what is that smell? <laughs> Open my bag, I'm like, oh my God. And then the hangover started, which oh. wasn't that bad, which did I was surprised did, did about. Did the chips in the bag help with the hangover? No, they kind of made it a little worse. <laughs> that would probably be my little bit of advice. Just make sure you bin the chips, go to sleep with the war, and then you'll be all right, should be okay. Very good advice. Thanks for the question, Jessica. We hope you enjoy your night out. Hopefully we didn't scare you too much. <laughs> Tweet us and let us know how it went. So we asked you about your top tips on hangovers and here's what you said. Hangover tips, right, okay. Eat, just eat, you know, a big breakfast, big lunch. I mean, some people go to like the gym and like sweat it out or whatever. No, mm, that's not for me. Like, I just wanna lie there, eat, watch TV, 
hopefully it will pass soon. Our next question comes from Megan and she says, I'm currently seeing this boy and he wants to take it further, although I don't think that I'm ready. I don't want to talk to my mum about it as, I've, as I haven't told her about him. What advice would you give about getting into a relationship? Rebecca, anything to add? I would probably say just speak to him, see what he thinks. Um, and if he's like, just do what you're comfortable with kind of thing. And then if he's kind of on the same page, same wavelength, then obviously you're going to do well. If not, then get rid of him, <laughs> sort of thing. But I think, yeah, just talk to him. Like, dis discussing things is like the most important thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. don't tell your mum. Just to kind of worms, yeah. But is not telling her mum meaning something's wrong with him? No, she can just work it out for herself, you know, it's all a learning curve. But the mum doesn't even know about him. Yeah, yeah so I was going to say this sounds like a good time to uh, bring this topic of conversation up with her mum, provided that she's someone that she trusts. And mm -hmm. But what if she brings that up with her mum and then speaks to him and he's like, oh, if you don't want to take it further, then see ya. And then well, she's told her mum, and then she has to explain that she's not with them because of that. Well, if that's the case, it doesn't sound like a very good guy to be with. Exactly, especially. She needs to work that out. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice <laughs> agreement here, Scott. Anything to add? Uh, I would, I would say, if you have like some, maybe some sensible friends. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to tell your mum, that is like, if you feel like it might be a little bit awkward, maybe talk to other people around that you could they feel more co like comfortable speaking to. Yeah. 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 I think like keeping it kind of between you and your friends to start with is always like, if you don't want to tell your mum, I think that's probably the best idea. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. as you said, just keep it to yourself, see how it goes and then just yeah. take it from mm -hmm. there kind of thing. I think that's really important. And then once it starts progressing, speak to your mum kind yeah. of thing. Cause then mm -hmm. she doesn't want to keep asking about it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best All idea. Right. Thank you for writing into us, Megan. And I hope everything works out between both of you. Our next question has been sent in anonymously, so we hope it helps as many as you out there watching. I identify as a gay man and I'm confident in my own skin. However, I'm too scared to come out to my parents as I feel they will judge me. How do you think I should approach them? That's a really good question. I'll probably pass this one over to Scott first. Scott, thoughts? Uh, I have some experience in this field, so uh, <laughs> hopefully I can help. Um, I always think that when you come out to your parents, like before you come out, you always think it's going to be far worse than it is. And I know in some cases that it is like really bad and some people get kind of abandoned by their parents or etc. But most of the time people have a level, level headed, like level head on them and they know that they can kind of deal with it emotionally. So my probably the biggest piece of advice is like be actually patient with your parents because your parents could be a little bit shocked and you might like be a bit angry at them because they are reacting in a way that you don't don't expect them to. But just give them a little bit of time because time heals everything. So that's probably the, the best advice. But also you just do it as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult question to empathise if you're not being in that situation mm -hmm. yourself, but I think having had kind of plenty of family members and, and close friends um, that have gone through this experience, it's I think I agree with Scott, just kind of having the courage to, to tell them and the support system that you deserve and will end up having in your life um, are going to be the ones that stick by you no matter what and you maybe just have to take that leap. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing is as well, it's your family and friends, so in most cases hopefully they will always support you and mm -hmm. always be there for you. So I think the best thing you can do is just come out and say it yeah. um, just so that they know and you are feeling comfortable with how you're feeling and everything. So I think that's probably yeah, the best is, thing. I would say there is support, even if it, if it does, like if they do take it in a bad way, there is support out there that you can reach out like on the internet or anywhere that you can find like kind of people that will help you through it. Our next question is also anonymous, but I'm sure we'll all agree that it does need to be more openly discussed. The person is asked, I'm struggling with my mental health, but those who know me think I'm always happy and don't worry about anything. I still want to be one of the lads and don't want to be a burden, but I just wish I could talk to them so they know how I'm feeling. What should I do? Jordan, any thoughts? Yeah, definitely. I think when it comes to stuff like this, what's really important is that you take care of yourself whichever way you need to. And if the people around you aren't being supportive of that, then, I mean, they're not going to be the kind of friends that are going to last anyway. Mm. Uh, if, if the lads don't want to hear you talk about it, then you shouldn't talk to them about it. 
yeah, I think I think I keep going back to this again and again, but like uh, just the the close people that you have that you, f you feel are like sensible and that you can kind of confined in there, there should be a few of them and even if you don't know who they are straight away like you, you can kind of like talk to them and see how it goes and like people are going to be more open than you think they are mm -hmm. yeah. like um, on the face of it mm. yeah definitely. I think and understand. groups of boys as well I think you'll always be surprised that if you try and talk to one of them they'll have something up as well other people in the group definitely. will feel the exact same it might just be that like, one person needs to speak up and the whole group feels the same way. Yeah, I completely agree. I've had experiences like this where you go to people that you trust with a problem you have and you're just surprised to find that you're not the only one. People have a wide array of problems and everyone's dealing with it in their own way. So that can help just to not feel alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think that it is, it is difficult when everyone sees you as happy and the kind of joker of the group because you don't want to let other people down and become more serious. But mm -hmm. everyone's going through something everyone will go through something in their lives and it's just important to to speak out and not be ashamed of it because you speaking out could encourage someone else to speak out uh -huh. in mm -hmm. turn absolutely and remember if you are struggling with your mental health please contact any of the websites or the phone number found below our final question for today's show was sent in by katie and she says i've just started uni and i'm struggling to be confident enough to make new friends what is the best way to approach people and how can I feel more confident within myself? Ruth, you've graduated. What do you think? Well, I think, um, first of all, don't be afraid to absolutely make a tit of yourself at uni because it's going to happen. You're going to meet people that you think you're going to be friends with and you're not. It's all going to change over the four years. You're going to be a completely different person when you graduate to when you started. Um, I mean, when I was 17, I refused to eat spam with my fingers in front of the hockey girls. Um, and it ended up, I ended up being completely isolated from the group, but I didn't really care. For not eating spam. Yeah, so th the pro of that, the out good outcome from that story was now I don't have friends that eat spam with their fingers. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, I yeah. do, would they let you do it with cutlery? Like, was that just not... Well, I'm a vegetarian, <laughs> right? <so laughs> the cutlery was the problem. <laughs> it wasn't so much the eating method, it was what I was eating. <laughs> you um, something has got... Yeah, I think Freshers Week or always is the best mm. way to do this because everyone's in the same boat and you're always there's always people going around like trying to speak to each other and it can be really awkward and i think that's mm. the thing that you just always have to think it's always going to be awkward but everyone's in the same boat mm. and you just have to like do it yeah go and speak to people <laughs> I mean, the, the first people you always meet is the people in your course so it is mm. just as simple as talking to them about the course yeah, then totally. that's it. It's just first day stuff. Yeah, just it, it kind of works itself out, really. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Aye, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, yeah, I think just being yourself and, yeah. as you said, just having a laugh. It always helps. I think if you just kind of make fun of yourself and have fun doing it, and yeah. talk about the course as well, and it mm -hmm. just that icebreaker there always <laughs> helps. I, I you know? would say don't be afraid to start with small talk. Like some people feel really awkward with that like it comes across as pathetic uh -huh. but it's just how conversations start you, you, don't, go, you don't go straight into a deep conversation yeah. you know what yeah. i mean so don't be afraid to start with some small talk so that's what we think but we asked some first year students their top tips on making friends at uni here's what they said so i have just started uni and i was really nervous but now that i have settled in i love it uh my top tip would be to really put yourself out there Go to things such as freshers and meet new people and find people that have the same interests as you. Um, also talk to people that are in your classes because they're going to be the people that you spend the most time with at the end of the day. I think that the best way to make friends at university is to not judge anybody, don't get the wrong idea, don't give everyone a chance, like go to the pub with people, like go out on nights out. Like personally my course was only like 30 people in it so like I had like house parties and flat parties to invite everybody over so we could get to know each other and you know like sitting with different people at lunch and like working with different people on projects. So that's all we've got time for today guys. Thanks for the questions. We hope you enjoyed it and hopefully we managed to help some of you out. Yeah it was really interesting to hear your stories and to get to share some of our own. And join us next week for even more gossip advice and stories. If you want to be featured in our next episode you can get in touch through our social media channels. Tweet us, tag us, DM us. Our handle is at Stuff Mum River Told You. Yeah, get involved. Your question could help loads of people. So until next week, bye. bye. bye.